Hi and welcome to another video of Into the Forest I Go. Today we are going to be talking about the running speed with the map, controlling the pace of the race. If this is your first time here, my name is Tom and this is Into the Forest I Go, a channel for all, all the orienteers around the world, a sport for uh, people running with the map and compass, having a lot of fun along the way really, so stay and enjoy. Now probably all of us some, at some point in our orienteering life had a friend that was probably quite good at running but not as good as you at controlling the map and navigating with the map. Uh, and th this gives us orienteers quite a pleasure experience of being able to beat someone not because we are stronger but because we are smarter. Isn't that so? I certainly enjoy myself in this area quite a lot. I'm not a great physical runner. I've, I never have been. I mean, I've never been able to reach the top of the top, but um, I always enjoyed the challenge of running with the map. So I, I was super happy when I was able to compete with people that I knew that they were faster than me, but I knew that also my edge when it comes to orienteering technique was a little bit better and I was able to catch up just by making a little bit less mistakes. And ideally your running pace and the pace of reading the map should match perfectly. This is, this is the perfect world, but it very rarely is so. And I'm here today to tell you that, first of all, controlling the speed of your race is one of the most important skills that you can acquire. And also that working on your O technique can actually pay a lot better than working on your physical shape. It's not always true. There are, of course, uh, some deviations from it because it all depends where, you're, where you currently are when it comes to your physical and technical preparations. But let's take into account this very true example. So imagine a top athlete, a top athlete who um, is constantly or, or consecutively placing at the very top of the national level, right? So it's a pretty good runner. Um, the person is very good when it comes to physical speed of running, uh, but it's not that great when it comes to technical orienteering. And I'll give you precise numbers because this is a real life examples. So for the past seven races, and I'm only taking into account the forest races for that matter, for the past seven races, the person has made on average 45 seconds of mistakes per kilometer. All right, 45 seconds of mistakes per kilometer. So if you imagine that the person is running a middle distance race, that's probably roughly four, five minutes of mistakes during the whole race. If the, if the person is running the long distance race, well, it's probably somewhere around 10 minutes, maybe even 12 minutes for the whole distance, right? So it is quite a lot. It is quite a lot. And now think about it. Is it easier to improve your orienteering technique and get better at using the map and the compass and lower the amount of errors that you're making during the race, get rid of some lost time that uh, is like getting away from you due to mistakes that you're making while navigating? Or is it easier to, for example, get 30 seconds faster per kilometer on track? And I'll just remind you that this person is already very good when it comes to the physical shape. Let's just say that uh, the person is able to run three kilometers with a speed of three minutes per kilometer, maybe also lower, right? So if you're not now going to um, want to cut off another 30 seconds per kilometer from this time, now that's going to be a level that will allow you to compete 
in the athletic championships, not just orienteering, right? And if you think about the amount of work that needs to be put into getting to that level of speed, it's tremendous, right? And at the same time, if you think about the, the amount of work that needs to be put into getting the number of your mistakes to 15 seconds per kilometer rather than 45 seconds per kilometer, now that's a lot more sensible investment. But there is also a different kind of approach that you can take to this particular example or any other similar one. Instead of thinking, what should I focus on, physical abilities or my technical abilities, let's consider this. If you are able to avoid the mistake by slowing down while running with the map, how much speed can you lose so that it still makes sense, right? It's a different approach to the same problem. It's a trade-off. It's a trade-off of speed versus avoiding mistakes, so losing time due to mistakes. And I would say that controlling your um, speed in the forest while running with the map can be a very good starting point of lowering the amount of mistakes that you're making. Because if you again think about it, slowing down and looking more carefully at the map and making sure that everything is okay will maybe cost you additional 10 seconds, 15 seconds. If you think how long 15 seconds is, you literally can stop for at least 12 seconds and think about what's going on around you before you <coughs> keep going. And that will just cost you 15 seconds. Count to 15 in your head. You will see that this is a quite a long time, especially when you're looking at the map and trying to figure out what's going on. And that's exactly why in the Orienteering Academy that we are launching right now, we're going to focus very hard on uh, this technical aspect of orienteering. So navigating with the map and compass and avoiding those mistakes, because this is a better investment for someone that is not at the level of the top athlete, for someone that has already been doing orienteering for some time, but is struggling to jump on that higher level. So uh, the access to the Orienteering Academy and those online meetings that we are going to have are going to be heavily focused around that area because that just makes sense. Unfortunately, being able to control the pace of your race is a typical case of easier said than done because there are many things in our head that are stopping us from actually doing this consciously. Um, quite a long time ago, actually, we had a runner in our sport club, a girl that came to us from that track running. She was a decent runner when it came to speed. She was winning um, the, the competitions all around the region uh, without the map, of course. And she wanted to give it a try and do orienteering for a little bit. And um, I developed a pretty close relationship with her. So I was working quite closely with her and talking a lot. And she um, tried a bunch of competitions. She went with us to training camps. Um, and after a while, she just decided to give up and drop off. And did she give up because she was a terrible orienteer? No. She was improving at a pace that was expected, at least from me, but she was not able to handle uh, the feeling that she's losing the race with people that she's, she knows she's faster compared to, right? So she was not able to accept that for some time she's actually going to be doing worse before it gets better and before she starts winning with the people that she was competing with. And that was gnawing at her, you know, this is something that um, she, she couldn't process properly. And because of her ambition, she just gave up and went back to running tracks or cross country. And there is nothing wrong with that. So, you know, she's doing fine. But this is, I feel, a pretty good example of how ambition is stopping us from slowing down.
we just want to get this best result and we feel like every second we waste slowing down is a second that will maybe contribute to a worse result in the end. A very bad line of thinking, if I can add so. Now, another point that I want to make over here is that um, the, 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 the routine pace is something that is also quite dangerous. What do I mean by a routine pace? You're accustomed to running with a certain pace. Each one of us has a certain racing pace which we um, enjoy and especially nowadays with the um, airless touchless system of punching the controls when you don't even have to stop to, to punch the control it kind of feels like you can just keep the same pace and go and go as long as you have the strength right so if you don't feel tired you don't get this feeling that oh maybe I will slow down because otherwise I won't be able to keep the pace until the end of the race if you're running with your your pace and, and it feels comfortable sometimes it's hard to make yourself slow down or even stop just because you need to read the map, right? Does it happen to you? Something that is very close to this one is also uh, what I like to call the downhill syndrome. You're running downhill and um, it's especially hard to, to, to slow down when you feel that um, this is a place where probably everybody's going super fast because it's easy to go downhill. The legs are just, you know, going by themselves. You don't even have to push. It feels uh, so um, featherless almost, right? And you, you feel that if you slow down now, you will, you're definitely wasting a lot of time, right? It feels easier to slow down or even start walking when, you, when you're up the hill. But when you're going downhill, so hard, so hard really, right? The last one that I have on the list over here is hope and we will come back to hope just in the next chapter as well um, but here I want to say that sometimes we are just hoping that it's going to be okay we are hoping for a good result we are thinking everybody is entitled entitled to a, a little bit of luck me included right so maybe this is my day maybe this is the race and you just keep going without realizing that the more you um, allow hope to take over, the more risk you're putting into your race. And in general, you usually want to avoid that. So all of those things, definitely understandable. We are all struggling with that. It's just how we are wired to behave. But it's important to understand that they are also harmful and they are causing you to make a lot more mistakes. To successfully modulate your running speed, you need to be able to spot those moments when this action has to be taken. And I will give you some tips on when to expect these moments to happen. The first one is you're running and you feel like that, that you're missing some of the crucial elements of every leg. So maybe you don't have a plan. Maybe you don't know your attack point. Maybe you don't know your control description. Maybe you feel that you are not controlling the direction or something is off with the direction. These are all clues that something is probably wrong. And then it usually makes sense to at least slow down, sometimes even stop, to make sure that you're in the, on a proper course to the control. The next one is you're losing a little bit of confidence. You're running and there is this subtle feeling that something is off, something is not right. You're not really sure what it is, but definitely something is not exactly as it should be. Now, here is a tricky part. Unfortunately, our head is trying very, very hard to convince us that it's okay, it's all right, you don't have to worry about it, we got this, man. Maybe the map is a little bit off, maybe you know, some bushes look a little bit different than you expected to, but that's okay. These are usually signs that something really is not as it should be. And make an effort to figure out what is really going on and making sure that everything is okay. Because there is, my experience says that there is usually a very big chance that your instinct 
your orienteering instinct is correct. The third one is that you're running, but it doesn't feel like you're ahead of your race anymore. So what do I mean about this? The proper way of running is not controlling what's coming to you and finding the elements on the map, but reading the map forward and then looking for the elements that you expect to see in the moment, right? So this is what the best orienteers do. They don't take in what the terrain gives them, but they rather project their expectations forward and then just check off if everything matches. If you're not running like this, you definitely should start thinking about it. If you are running like this, and, but you're not perfect in this area, and, and nobody is, so don't worry about it, um, then there will be moments during the race when you're suddenly not ahead of the map, but you're with the map and taking in the terrain instead of projecting your visualization of the terrain from the map. So this is again a clue that if you're at this point in time, you should slow down because you're not doing your normal orienteering. You're just taking a step back and maybe possibly getting closer to making a mistake. The last one I want to give you is you feel that you're not fully in control of what's going on around you. And it's different than point two. Uh, so th there is not this, you know, feeling that uh, a little bit scary feeling that something is bad and maybe you will make a mistake, but it's rather a feeling of hope, a very treacherous feeling in orienteering because hope normally is fantastic. But in orienteering, in doing the race, finding the next control, if you're hoping to find a control, and you're not sure that, oh, it's going to be over there behind this hill or behind this rock, I'm sure of it, but you're hoping, well, I hope it's going to be there because if it's not, I'm... it's bad. Then again, this is a clue for you that it's probably a good time to modulate the pace of the race. Unfortunately, I don't have any master tip here for you. This delicate balance between your speed and your orienteering technique just requires conscious work. You need to think about it, you need to uh, include it in your post-race analysis, and with time it will get better. You will learn how to modulate the pace, you will learn first actually how to identify the triggers and then when to modulate your pace, and it will start paying off, you will be seeing benefits of it. And of course, with time again, when your orienteering technique improves, you will also be able to get on this higher level and match your orienteering speed with your running speed, or actually in this case, your running speed with your orienteering speed, right? Um, so just bear with it and it will bring fruits eventually. Now, is there a different approach. Does it make sense to not slow down but actually keep working diligently on improving your uh, orienteering skills? Yes, this is also a, um, a, an available choice but in my experience this choice is harder. You will have to deal with lots of failure, with lots of disappointment and Unfortunately, people are not great here, right? We prefer when things are going along with our expectations, when, when things are doing good, not bad. So if we have a decent race, we will be, you know, more inclined to go back to training, go back to orienteering, rather than when, you, when we butcher every race after race after race for months, sometimes even years, right? That's a really hard path. But at the same time, the results might actually be better and we might be able to get to this higher level a little bit faster. How much faster? Is it really faster? Honestly, it's hard for me to say. I don't have any conclusive evidence to support that. So it's just a guess at this point in time. And that's why I think that the route where you actually slow down to match your orienteering skills and then speed up when your orienteering skills are developing is an easier one, a better one and less risky, 
honestly. All right, this is all I had for you today. If you've enjoyed this, give this video a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy it, give it thumbs down. I'll also be curious to know what do you think about modulating your speed in the forest? How do you handle it? Do you have a problem with this? I definitely do. And sometimes I really need to push myself in my head to really slow down um, because I just feel like I want to keep going and it doesn't feel right to lose the pace. Do you struggle with it as well? Let me know in a comment. And also, if you're not subscribed yet, and I know that quite a lot of you are not, then consider hitting that subscribe button. Thank you a lot for watching, and I'll be seeing you in some of the next videos. Take care.